Good morning. My name is Lauren Feldman, and I am the Dean of Students at the Institute of Culinary Education. I'd like to welcome you to our first virtual commencement ceremony. While we wish we could celebrate you in person, we hope that you are gathered today with your friends and family to acknowledge your hard work and successful completion of your culinary, pastry, or management studies. Without further delay, I would like to introduce the CEO and Chairman of the Institute of Culinary Education, Rick Smilo. Greetings, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. I have been president and CEO of ICE for 26 years. Back in 1995, I couldn't predict the school would be as large and prominent as it is today. I didn't know we would have management and plant-based programs, a school location in Lower Manhattan or a campus in Los Angeles. I would not have guessed that I'd still be involved. Of course, I also didn't know that in 2020 and 2021, unfortunately, social distancing thermal temperature checks, COVID testing, and dealing with a global pandemic would be part of school operations. But most importantly, I didn't know how satisfying it would make me feel to know that my investment of time and resources would help now thousands of people just like you to launch their careers. So to be addressing you today is personally very rewarding. To begin with, there are some thank yous I'd like to extend. First, the parents and loved ones. You encourage your students. You may have helped pay for their education. You may have tasted their homework, and hopefully it was tastier at the end than at the beginning. Second, the staff at ICE that works hard and with purpose and dedication. It's a broad group. First coming to mind are the instructors, but there are also dozens and dozens of people in roles like registrar, job placement, financial aid, student advisory, admissions, food purchasing, facilities maintenance, and more that make it possible for our diploma programs to run. And thank you to the people who planned this commencement ceremony. A special call out to Chef Lachlan Sands, Dean Lauren Feldman, Kiri Tannenbaum, Maki Yazawa, and Martha Cotto. And in advance, I'd like to thank our guest speakers. So you may be wondering, who's out there watching? Who's listening? It's too bad we can't be together in a large and beautiful hall, just right for ceremonies and celebrations. For sure, it's fun when classmates meet up at graduations. That couldn't happen this year. But for the benefit of the families and friends who are listening, let me give you an overview. Our commencement today is designed for graduates of the last 22 months whose program and diploma from ICE was either culinary arts, pastry and baking, restaurant and culinary management, hotel and hospitality management, or health supportive culinary arts, which is our newer plant-based program. Beyond programs, let me paint the picture of diversity. It's not just ethnic, it's age and country and especially background and aspiration. For example, there's recent high school grads like Jamal who moved to New York City from Maryland after high school. After finishing his studies, he took a position at Cut, Wolfgang Puck's New York Steakhouse. There's Molly, a Barnard College liberal arts graduate who wanted to work in food media and is now doing so at Marley Spoon. There's Lena, a hospitality man and graduate who held a number of customer service positions before ICE and realized that interacting with people was the favorite part of her job. There are students from foreign countries like Yiding from China, Maria from Sweden, Mihak from India, Daniela from Chile, and Jonathan from Indonesia. There's Shant, whose family relocated to the US from Syria when he was 10 years old. He completed his externship at the French Laundry and is now already executive chef at the Glenmark Hotel in Glendale, California. And we have students who grew up in the restaurant business, like Maggie, whose family owns a 200-seat landmark 70-year-old deli in Los Angeles. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't give you some perspective and some advice. The first perspective, be optimistic. The COVID-19 pandemic, which is fading fast in America, changed lives and plans for almost everyone. Some of you lost people that were important in your life, and everyone had fear. Professionally, for many of you, it meant your jobs disappeared, your school schedule changed, your externship plans were put on hold, and so much more. As you know, there was real fear about the future of the restaurant sector. Fortunately, the current reality is much better than the worst predictions. America's million plus restaurants and eating establishments have proved to be resilient. And through the two PPP programs and the Restaurant Recovery Act, the federal government has stepped up and provided billions of dollars of relief to the culinary sector. According to the research firm Data Essential, as of the end of March, 
Just over 10% of restaurants in the U.S. have closed permanently since the coronavirus pandemic began. That still leaves 90%. As for the restaurants that closed, for sure, many of those spaces will be leased and opened as new restaurants. It's easy to project that there are ICE alumni making such plans today. The big headline for culinary school graduates now is that the pandemic has disrupted the labor and talent pool. There's lots of reasons for that, but the clear takeaway is that there is opportunity for you. Even the most celebrated restaurateurs and chefs in the country are looking for staff and talent. And these enterprises need not just staff, they need managers and leaders. So whatever culinary or hospitality ladder you are hoping to climb, you can climb that ladder faster today than at any time in recent decades. The second perspective is that after 26 years, I know that our alumni will define success in many ways. As you know, our school motto is find your culinary voice. When that was first presented to us by a marketing agency around 2009, I thought it was sort of corny. But soon after, I realized it fits so well and it describes what we try so hard to do here every day. Here are some examples of the different voices and paths that our alumni have chosen. For Mark Murphy, it's being a star chef. Mark is a regular on the Food Network, on shows including Chopped, Unique Eats, and The Best Thing I Ever Ate. For Maria Rodriguez, it's keeping her daytime administrative job in a medical center, but working on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday nights as the pastry chef in a New Jersey suburban restaurant. That was her goal, to keep her day job and be a part-time pastry chef. For Andrew Riggi, culinary school led to civic engagement and what I would call culinary politics, Andrew is the founding director of the New York City Hospitality Alliance, which particularly during the last year was the voice of New York City's restaurant community, working with city, state, and national leaders to get through the pandemic storm. So success can be defined in many ways, and one's culinary voice can be defined in many ways. Find yours. And by the way, as your voice and choices develop, let ICE's Career Services Department know what you are doing. So here's some advice. Advice number one. Make teamwork a goal. The last time the James Beard Foundation Awards were held live was in Chicago in 2019. I went to that celebration. I heard 30 or so people accept awards. They were male and female, young and old, black, brown, and white. The word I heard most often in the acceptance speeches was teamwork. Everyone in their acceptance speech talked about teamwork and thanked their team. One of the winners was ICE alumnus Mashama Bailey, executive chef and co-owner of The Gray in Savannah, Georgia. She won the James Beard Foundation Award for Best Chef Southeast. Her words were, quote, none of us would be in this room without a team, none of us, and my team is amazing. They worked hard. I know you are watching the awards online. I love you so much. So what makes a good team player great? Well, she or he is always reliable, adapts quickly and easily, displays genuine commitment, does more than is asked, and communicates honestly, clearly, and respectfully. With great teamwork, a workplace, be it a hotel, a pastry shop, a restaurant, or a catering business, is more satisfying. The results are better, and new ideas are more apt to develop. Today, one of your jobs is to be a great teammate, but in years to come, we hope and expect one of your jobs will be to create and guide a team. Advice number two. Be patient. While earlier I was speaking about your diversity, there is one thing I know you all have in common. That is that you are only one to 24 months into your careers after culinary school. In the scheme of things, that's not very long. And most, or perhaps all of you, are in jobs where there are so many techniques, skills, and practices to master. So the simple advice is be patient. Focus on mastering skills so that you can move on to other skills. Focus on mastering skills so that you can teach those skills to others. Here are some quips and quotes on that subject. Chef Alex Atala, who is perhaps the best known living chef in South America wrote, the difference between what is good, very good and exceptional can be found in repetition. A chef must master the basics before he or she can create something exceptional. And the only way to master something is to repeat the process many times, honing your skills and making slight changes to your methods until you have reached your own version of perfection. Another quote comes from an ICE alum named Colin Aleveris. Years ago, I heard him address some of our students on campus. I learned from him the expression, repetition is only boring if you don't realize you are learning something. My last quote, a bit more tongue in cheek than the others, is from Chef Daniel Baloud, who said, remember, it's never the knives fault. 
The last part about patience is that it's easier to be patient when you don't spend too much time comparing yourself to other people. A great piece of advice for everyone is, don't spend energy comparing yourself to others. Compare yourself to who you were yesterday. The third and last advice is allow yourself to focus on your dreams. Give yourself permission to dream big. It may not be something you do every day, but enough to inspire you. Take intentional and effective action towards your dreams. Develop and plan steps, baby steps or big steps, that help you move forward with your goals. Much of that can be on the job, taking the time to learn things that are beyond your current responsibilities that will help prepare you for bigger roles. And when it comes to your dreams, make sure you have people in your life who can give you support, perspective, and honest feedback as you pursue your dreams. To sum it up, be patient but ambitious and keep focused on teamwork. In closing, I want to congratulate you all for graduating the Institute of Culinary Education. I wish you good fortune, good luck, good health, good cooking, good baking, and managing. Enjoy the journey you have begun. Our commencement speaker this year is a health supportive culinary arts graduate who has achieved much success in the short time since she completed her studies at ICE. Originally born and raised in Richmond, Virginia, she relocated to Washington, D.C. to attend Howard University. While in school, she worked in the restaurant industry, and in 2016, she embraced a plant-based lifestyle. In 2018, after some changes in her personal life, she decided to pursue a professional career in the culinary industry, and she enrolled at ICE in 2019. Please give a warm welcome to this year's graduate speaker, Shanari Freeman. Good morning, family, faculty, staff, chef instructors, esteemed guests, and most importantly, my fellow graduates. It is my honor today to deliver the commencement address for the graduating class. Thank you, Chef Lauren and Ice Culinary for having me. I'd like to share a quote from Mohadessa Nejumi. You are not always right. It's not always about being right. The best thing you can offer others is understanding. Being an active listener is about more than just listening. It is about reciprocating and being receptive to somebody else. Everybody has woes. Nobody is safe from pain. However, we all suffer in different ways. So learn to adapt to each person, know your audience, and reserve yourself for people who have earned the depths of you. Remember that first day of class, you walked in, with your uniform, new iPads, knife kits, chef hats, new lockers, and maybe even a mask, depending on when your program started. Many of us already in the industry thought we knew everything. Many of us walked in knowing nothing. But regardless of your background in the hospitality world and where you may fall on the spectrum, you chose to walk on this path. Fast forward a few knife cuts, new friends, burned cookies, overcooked chickens, stained chef coats, parking tickets, lost ID cards, jammed library printers, and a pandemic later, we made it. So please take a moment to congratulate yourself and bask in this moment. You deserve all of the praise despite the odds that were put against you. I started this speech addressing family because that's who and what got most of us here and through school in the first place. I want to take a second to highlight and remind all of you how important a family dynamic is. Families can look like mothers, fathers, aunts, uncles, and siblings, or family can look like best friends, industry coworkers, chef instructors, classmates, and mentors. These individuals, whoever they may be for you, have supported us through all of our failures, mistakes, and mishaps. Some have provided financial help, Others have given life-changing advice, and some have just simply listened to us vent about how our arms and backs hurt from carrying extra bags since the closing of the locker rooms. This base of love and support has been an essential part of all of our journeys, so we give thanks to you as well. My earliest food memories began with my late grandmother, Anna Mae White, born August 25th, 1929 in Dundas, Virginia. She was a sharecropper and grew up farming tobacco, peanuts, and cotton in Southern Virginia. 
After school, she would always make me a few staple items, grits, fat back, buttermilk biscuits, and smothered pork chops. And there would always be a fresh pie on the stovetop. When she would do my hair, I would sit on the floor, snapping green beans and snap peas, my small contribution to dinner. Later on as a teenager, I started making my own gourmet meals, oodles and noodles. But not just any, I would fry an egg and add hot sauce and Old Bay to them. I really thought I was doing something back then. And still to this day, my family nickname is Noodles. What a time. Food has always been around all of us and it is truly a full circle moment to be here today and create new memories with our loved ones. Let us not take this gift for granted. Use it as a light when faced with darkness. In 2020, the world was forced to stop and face many harsh truths. Police brutality, systematic racism, hate crimes, food insecurities, economic inequalities, climate control, and political division, just to name a few. Many of us spent 2020 protesting, donating, volunteering, and using our voices to combat these issues. As we venture off and jumpstart our careers in this world, remember your gifts and light up every room that you enter. We are the chosen ones. In the words of the great philosopher Cardi B, if it's up, then it's stuck. Congratulations to all of my fellow graduates. Fly high, the sky's the limit. I would now like to introduce 2005 culinary arts graduate, Matt Highland, the co-founder of the very popular Pizza Loves Emily restaurant group, which you likely know for wood-fired Detroit-style pizzas at Emily and Emmy Squared. After an externship at Public, Matt's career took him through many facets of the culinary world, from salad to smoking meats, to cooking on the line, and even working on the administrative side to open the Breslin before he realized pizza was his passion. Today, his Brooklyn-born pizza restaurants have expanded to DC, Philadelphia, Louisville, and Nashville, where even his burger gets good press. Please join me in welcoming Matt Highland. Hello faculty, family members, students, chefs. I wanna shout out two current graduates, Kristen and Mark. Kristen was one of our best interns ever in both skill and attitude and learned how to use a wood-fired oven in record time. And Mark, who I give pizza advice to in exchange for meatballs from Rayo's. I am Matthew Hyland, class of 04, owner and creator of Emily and Emmy Squared Restaurants. I was 23 when I started at ICE. A month out of college with an IT degree, ready to saute the whole world and doing whatever it takes to impress Chef Ted. I worked in some great restaurants over the next 10 years and ICE always helped me out with jobs and advice when I was looking for something new. Picking up valuable how-tos and what not to do's, long nights of hard work and many, many burns. In 2014, I took the leap to open my own restaurant. Emily is a small but ambitious pizza restaurant in beautiful Clinton Hill. It was a big hit right away and Emmy Squared came along two years later. In 2016, I was invited to ICE to cook for the holiday party. It was a huge honor. Many great chefs have come out of ICE, so I was a little hesitant to be making Emmy burgers for my old instructors who were now my peers. Almost everyone was my peer. Chef Ted comes into the room and proceeds to watch me for the next 30 minutes while I am cooking. Right away, I'm back to being 23 again, making sure my technique and posture were on point to show off that I was actually paying attention in class. I handed Chef Ted a burger. He took a bite and shook his head in approval. I finally exhaled after holding it in for the previous 12 years and half hour. The restaurant industry has undergone the largest transition in recent history. We've gone from good days and bad days to mostly bad days with a fight to survive. Everyone tried to pivot, but for some that wasn't enough. The industry is in shambles. We had to let staff go. Our vendors stopped delivering, bills piled up, and the staff that stayed was scared of an unknown future. I'm grateful to be one of the lucky ones that made it through the darkest times. I emphasize luck because at some points it could have gone either way. My partner, Simone Tong, also an ICE grad, and I had a baby in August of 2020. We both had no idea how we would raise a child in this climate. Week to week, neither of us knew if we had income. The most scary of all was the realization that I may have to move my family into my mother's basement. Thankfully, that did not happen. Sorry, mom. Chefs, bakers, managers, your personal life has been upended. Jobs have disappeared, and in some cases, the ultimate tragedy of losing family members. Life outside the kitchen has already prepared you for what it takes to persevere in this industry. As summer approaches, there is a bright side to this grim story. The streets are full of excited people, ready to dine again. New leaders are ready to take over an industry that so desperately needs new blood. A fresh start is not only required, but also exciting. 
This is the beginning of the renaissance for restaurants. New culture, new ideas, new cuisines, and most importantly, new leaders like yourself. Congratulations, graduates. We are incredibly honored to have food writer and dynamic television personality Gail Simmons as the keynote speaker of our first virtual commencement ceremony. An ICE alumnus and culinary icon from Toronto, Canada, Gail is best known as one of the three main judges on Bravo's Emmy and James Beard award-winning series, Top Chef. Gail arrived in New York City in 1999 to attend the Institute of Culinary Education. Prior to Top Chef, her restaurant and food media experience included Le Cirque, followed by Jean Georges Vong Restaurant, Vogue Magazine, Restaurant Danielle, and Food and Wine Magazine. Gail has been a key player in the Top Chef franchise for nearly 15 years. In addition to her judge duties, Gail is the host of Top Chef Amateurs, the latest spin-off set to premiere this year, as well as Iron Chef Canada. Gail is an entrepreneur in residence at Babson College, and she co-founded Bumble Pie Productions. She's also a board member and advocate for organizations including City Harvest and Hot Bread Kitchen. Personally, I remember Gail as a student. In fact, as a student, she appeared in what I would call a modest TV commercial for ICE. Not sure if we get credit for launching her TV career, but she was great in that commercial. For the last 20 years, she has been a friend to me and many others at the school. We're proud to recognize all of her dazzling accomplishments and are excited to welcome Gail Simmons to speak at today's commencement address. Thank you. Hello everyone, congratulations graduates. Welcome family and friends of ICE and thank you so much to Rick and the whole ICE faculty for inviting me to speak today. I am thrilled to join you at this exciting moment in your careers, even if only virtually, to celebrate your accomplishments as you embark on whatever you choose to do next. Whoever thought when I graduated from this very same Culinary Institute in 1999 that I would end up here addressing you? And where is here anyway? Well, these days, it's a bit of a moving target, mostly executed from central command in my home kitchen, where I now spend hundreds of hours prepping mise en place, setting up smart devices for countless cooking classes, Zoom demos, TV segments, recipe and photo shoots, charity events, articles and talks broadcast from coast to coast. But this wasn't always the case. For over 15 years, I spent much of my time at Food & Wine Magazine, where, as Rick mentioned, from 2004 to 2010, I directed what has become the most renowned and respected culinary festival on the continent, the annual Food & Wine Classic. The biggest stars in food once looked to me to make sure every glass was full and every ingredient prepped and ready. So did the rest of the 5,000 consumers who attended each year. In 2010, I passed the job to another set of capable hands to focus on other work for myself and for the magazine, including a monthly column and a video series. And in 2018, I transitioned out of my role at Food & Wine altogether to work on my own brand, including expanded books and television roles, teaching, food and restaurant consulting, philanthropy, and a women-focused content production company, as well as others. Much of my time is, of course, also spent as a judge on Bravo's hit reality competition, Top Chef, now in our 18th season. Along with Padma Lakshmi and Tom Colicchio, I help set and judge challenges for a group of pro cooks and eliminate one each week until a winner is named, receiving $250,000 and an exceptional amount of exposure. As anyone who's following along might know, our chefs have gone on to become household names and, since 2006, when the show first aired, have opened upwards of 200 or more restaurants around this country. They've written countless books, launched their own brands, and won the industry's top awards for their extraordinary talent. So it seems what we thought of back then as a little reality television experiment really worked. A lot of pressure, sometimes, but worth every drop of sweat and every sleepless night. So how did I get from ice to here? The answer is simple, I ate. It's what I do for me and I know for all of you, food and cooking is much more than survival. It's played an integral role in shaping my life as a cook, as a woman, and as a former anthropology student fascinated by the world around me. The fact that I happen to have an unusually big appetite never hurt either. I'll give you some background. I was born in Toronto, Canada, and on a whim, in my last year of college, I started writing restaurant reviews for my student paper. Not really sure what gave me the idea to do it, but I always loved food and cooking and restaurants, and I thought it would be fun. I never actually, ironically, thought of it as a career, even though I grew up in a house that loved food and the traditions around it. 
Like many moms, mine spent hours every day in our kitchen. It was the heart and the soul of our home. But she was actually a food writer too, and she ran a small cooking school for all the local parents out of our house when I was young. It was her way of being able to work at what she loved and still be home to take care of us. When I graduated, I had no idea what to do with my life, not a clue. Which you can imagine worried my mother until a family friend asked me to write down what I loved to do. Food, travel, write, cook. That's what I wrote. Well, bingo, she said, go do it. Really? How could those things be a job for me? I, knew it's, I know it sounds ridiculous because my mother was an actual food writer and cooking teacher, but when you're 21, following in your mother's footsteps isn't exactly what you want to be doing, right? So through a friend, I landed a job, a summer internship at a famed Toronto magazine. It was the City Monthly, where I learned about the world of editing and writing, fact-checking and research. And in that time, I found I was drawn to the food editor and the restaurant reviewer. Their lives seemed so glamorous and exciting. And I realized then that there was a whole world of politics and insiders and a whole language to the food industry. From there, I moved on to the National Post, a huge Canadian newspaper that was just launching, where I got a job as an editorial assistant. Again, I felt the pull to the food pages, but there were limited opportunities for food writers in Canada at the time, and I looked to my editor for guidance. He gave me some interesting advice. You need to get on the front lines, he said. If you want to be a war reporter, you need to go where the action is. If you want to write about food, you need to know how to cook. Sounds obvious, but it wasn't. So that was that. I'd always dreamed of moving to New York and here was my chance. I literally packed my knives and enrolled in what was then called the Peter Kump New York Cooking School on West 23rd Street, not knowing at all what to expect. And I was off. A friend of mine let me live in what was essentially his closet and I thought I'd stay for about eight months, do the school program and then go back to Canada to get a job as a food writer. Well, eight months in that little apartment lasted two years and now, after 22 years in the city, it's safe to say I'm a New Yorker. Meanwhile, ICE was far more difficult and demanding than I had imagined. But for me, it was heaven. I had finally found my people and my place. I was in a class of 15 students from nine countries around the world. And when it ended, much like all of you, I had to do an externship. And I turned to my career services director who encouraged me to first go cook at a New York restaurant instead of just going right to magazines where I always assumed I would land. Reluctantly, I agreed. My first stop was Le Cirque 2000, a legendary kitchen that isn't open anymore, but I was there cooking on the line. The only woman, I might add a young Canadian girl on the pasta risotto and hot app station six days a week, no regular days off, and I don't want to sugarcoat it. It was by far the hardest, most tedious work of my life. There were several tears cried in the evenings over those hot stoves, but each night when 5 p.m. struck, the restaurant became the best show in town. From there, I moved to Jean-Georges Von Gerichten's Vong restaurant, at the time a hot new Thai-inspired place that was a very new concept and super exciting. Again, I was the only woman cooking on the line, but it was a smaller team and far more comfortable for me. I learned about so many ingredients there that I had never known before, and I loved it. After a few months, though, I had the itch to go back to writing, which was my original plan. And I felt that it was time to put all I had learned into action on the page. So I went back to my ICE career development director who asked me what my dream job would be. I had just read this book called The Man Who Ate Everything by Jeffrey Steingarten. I can't recommend it highly enough. The revered food critic from Vogue magazine. And in it, he writes about his assistant, how one day she's shopping for obscure ingredients in Chinatown and the next day she's stuffing a turducken. It was the perfect mix of all I had learned so far. And I wanted a job just like that, to eat, write, travel and cook. Funnily, he said he'd just seen Jeffrey a few days before and he was actually looking for an assistant. What are the chances? That was a Friday. I sent my resume on Monday, interviewed on Wednesday, and what an interview it was. It lasted three hours in which I had to translate recipes from two other languages, taste test food, and discuss every new restaurant in the city. I fumbled through it, but somehow I got the job. I spent the next two years as his research and recipe assistant, and I wrote his second book with him, as well as every article he wrote for Vogue. It was fabulous, living the life of a Vogue assistant, but 
This was no Devil Wears Prada, make no mistake. Prada was not even on my radar. He was not an easy man to work for. But to this day, I know I took away from him and that job more than any that ever came before or after. He opened up the world of New York to me and the world of food writing. He introduced me to every chef he knew around the globe and taught me how to test recipes, how to write and do research like a pro. When I was ready to move on, I called all the contacts I'd met through Jeffrey, but had no clue what to do next. All I knew was I wanted to work at magazines, remember? Eventually, I landed a meeting with Danielle Boulou, the fanciest French chef on the Upper East Side, who'd always been kind to me when I had met him with Jeffrey. As you may know, Danielle owns an empire of some of the most acclaimed restaurants in the world, and he was looking for someone to help coordinate and write his upcoming books with him and help with special events and public relations under his marketing director. This was certainly a departure from what I had planned to do as a writer, but when Danielle Ballou offers you a job, here's a piece of advice. Just take it. It was a good thing I did. Every day, I got to work alongside one of the greatest chefs in America, running between his three New York City restaurants, opening several more across the country. Danielle, although intense and very serious when cooking, was a fun-loving and larger-than-life father figure to us all. He still is. The dining rooms were packed each night, and his team taught me all about the actual business of running a restaurant. Essentially, he gave me what I say was my MBA in restaurant management, PR, and marketing invaluable lessons, to be sure. I had always thought up to this point, as I've said, that I wanted to be a writer. After all, way back then, the term media referred generally to just one thing, print. But the landscape was changing so quickly, and while at Danielle, I realized maybe I didn't want to spend my career in front of a computer, and in fact, I wanted to work with people who made the industry run and allowed me to be more social and interactive, to get my hands dirtier, so to speak. I seemed to be good at it. Meanwhile, I'd come to know the team at Food & Wine through Danielle, and when one of the members of their marketing staff left, he offered me his job. I had no idea what I'd be doing exactly, but it seemed to be the perfect way to combine my desire to be back in publishing with all the experiences I had accumulated so far. So after three years with Danielle, I accepted the position and quickly transitioned into the job directing the classic in Aspen, as well as managing chef relationships, events that the magazine created, and a lot of different aspects that brought this magazine and its pages to life. Top Chef and the television piece of my life actually came through Food & Wine as more of a side gig at first. Because of my cooking and press experience, my editor-in-chief decided to try me out as a spokesperson. I would do small segments for news and TV, recipes, food trends, or stories from the pages of the magazine. Just a few minutes here and there. I was able to use my cooking and food knowledge and work with the people I loved and admired at the same time. My culinary school training was really coming together. About a year into the job, the magazine publisher asked if I would do a screen test for a reality show they were thinking of working on as a marketing partner. The premise was vaguely to search for the next great young chefs in the country. I didn't even know what a screen test was, but I went to NBC's offices in Rockefeller Center the next morning anyway. Thankfully, I had prepared a few potential answers to questions about chefs and food, my best and worst restaurant experiences, And it was actually my worst restaurant experience, bursting into tears after a burnt omelet that I'd eaten at a diner just days before that ended up getting me the job. The executive producers loved the story. They couldn't believe that someone was so passionate about their eggs. And I was soon sitting in what would be called Top Chef's Judges Table. We had no idea what we were doing that first season in 2005. It feels like a lifetime ago. We were the first food reality competition of its kind, and as you probably know, it's been imitated at this point to no end. But we trusted the producers, we shared Bravo's mission to discover diverse culinary talent, and we admired Top Chef judge Tom Colicchio. If he was doing it, we couldn't be totally off track. At first, it was actually hard to tell if anyone was watching, but slowly and steadily, momentum grew. We filmed a second season in Los Angeles, and by the time the finale aired, we were a full-blown hit the number one food show on all of cable television, with millions of people tuning in each week. Suddenly, every chef in the country was banging down our door to be a guest on the show. And for 15 years at our judges' table, we've now sat with the greatest chefs and food personalities in the business, plus stars of every kind. 
Along the way, we've produced multiple spin-offs and met some exceptionally young cooks from across the country who put their livelihood on the line for their chance at being the best, many of whom have gone on to be the country's next generation of culinary leaders. We've had more success per capita than any other show in reality TV history. Just let that sink in. All for restaurants. These days, I'm branching off in new directions. I wrote two cookbooks, a memoir appropriately called Talking With My Mouthful, and a cookbook called Bringing It Home, based on my world travels. I've hosted other TV shows like Iron Chef Canada and The Dish on Oz, and this July, I'll host Top Chef's newest spinoff called Top Chef Amateurs, for the first time bringing home cooks into our kitchen. So stay tuned. In 2014, I launched a production company called Bumble Pie Productions with a close friend as a vehicle to showcase more diverse, female-focused voices in the food space and make the industry look and feel more equitable for all. I also sit on the board of several organizations, lending my voice and expertise to causes I feel strongly about, including childhood hunger, women's rights, and mental health. Which brings me to the loss and heartache the world experienced this year. The pandemic exposed many holes in the way we need to care for each other. The microcosm of America's restaurant community felt like a metaphor for all of it. Economic collapse without a safety net for our most vulnerable members, healthcare inefficiency and insufficiency, abuses of power in corporate culture, and a deep-rooted and systemic racial and gender inequity going back generations. The work to mend these wounds is far from over. But as a cheerleader for our industry, I've watched proudly as so many leaders emerge to call for civil and social justice, to demand government support, and to nurture our families and teams in innovative ways like only restaurants can. The industry looks very different now as its proverbial mask is removed, which is where you, our next generation, come in. Restaurant and hospitality work is hard. It requires dedication and sacrifice, skill, patience, willingness to compromise. It requires being humble and to always be learning. It's a long game and there are few shortcuts to success, but if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that food transcends borders and has the power to heal. Restaurants are the embodiment of this message and becoming one of us means shouldering that responsibility as well as reaping the rewards of a life with purpose. I know it sounds cliche, but through my whole uncharted journey, the most impactful moments have been connecting with people who tell me that I've inspired them to cook or to feed others, to try new things and expand their culinary repertoire, or that they've learned more about other cultures and even their own cultures from what I do. What more could I ask for in a job? What better affirmation that dropping everything to go to culinary school was a worthwhile investment? And it's in these moments that I realize the larger lessons I've learned along the way. That a love of food and cooking opens doors and creates lasting friendships. That it's okay to cry over burned eggs because in fact, it might even work in your favor. That the language of food is universal, whether at your dining room table, on a reality cooking show, or on the line every night cooking for a meal for hungry customers or communities in need. That it's okay to not have a long-term plan for what to do next, This year has shown us that life changes in the blink of an eye. And sometimes the opportunity is not straight ahead of you, but to the left or to the right. So keep your head held high, your eyes open wide, and remember to season your food with kindness, compassion, and a big pinch of adventure. Above all, remember to just keep cooking. Thanks and congratulations. We are at the part of our program where we will introduce you our current graduates. Even though we may not hear you, make some noise for yourself and your fellow classmates as we recognize all your achievements. Francis Adnan, Pastry and Baking Arts. Serwinger Alexander, Pastry and Baking Arts. Kristen Ambrosino, Culinary Arts. Christian Apice, Culinary Arts. Chloe Azrui, Culinary Arts. Marianne Atar, Restaurant and Culinary Management. 
Maria Azzarelli, Pastry and Baking Arts. Natalie Barkley, Culinary Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management and recipient of the Top Student Award. Mary Barry, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Pablo Barrios Pacheco, Culinary Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management. Victoria Bayer, Hospitality and Hotel Management and recipient of the Top Student Award. Savannah Beeman, Culinary Arts. Natalie Bojikian, Hospitality and Hotel Management. Jacqueline Bonavita, Health Supportive Culinary Arts. Kieran Braithwaite, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Prairie Broughton, Culinary Arts. Malik Brown, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Christopher Bryant, Pastry and Baking Arts. Camille Bustos, Culinary Arts. Leah Calderon, Health Supportive Culinary Arts. Joshua Carlucci, Culinary Arts. Isabella Cartaya, Pastry and Baking Arts and recipient of the Top Toke Award. Elise Castro Villa, Pastry and Baking Arts. Alexander Chanturia, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Tian Chen, Culinary Arts. Veronica Chuhan, Health Support of Culinary Arts and recipient of the Leadership Award. Rachel Fox, Culinary Arts. Emmeline Craigie, Culinary Arts. Alexandra Dalia, Health Support of Culinary Arts. Christine De Pasquale, Health Support of Culinary Arts. Michael Diaz, Culinary Arts. Gabriela DeSanto, Culinary Arts. Samuel Donaldson, Culinary Arts. Jaceline Dutch, Pastry and Baking Arts. Karina Duarte Alfonsin Ray, Health Supportive Culinary Arts. Yaskalia Duran, Culinary Arts. Maya Egenstina, Pastry and Baking Arts. Maline Ekloive Rendon, Pastry and Baking Arts. Gerardo Estevez Franco, Culinary Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management. Brianna Fama, Culinary Arts. Margaret Feinberg, Restaurant and Culinary Management. William Finelli, Culinary Arts. Marie Fleurisma, Pastry and Baking Arts. 
Andrew Florang, Pastry and Baking Arts. Chase Ford, Culinary Arts, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Jason Forella, Health Supportive Culinary Arts. Java Frankel, Culinary Arts. Justin Galarza, Culinary Arts. Glendon Glashen, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Catherine Gomez Beltran, Culinary Arts. Michaela Grimaldi, Culinary Arts. Cecilia Guerra Palacios, Pastry and Baking Arts. Vladimir Guerriere, Culinary Arts. Hadley Gustason, Pastry and Baking Arts. William Haig, Culinary Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management. Caitlin Hockey, Pastry and Baking Arts. Joseph Hamilton, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Francesca Healy, Culinary Arts. Keith Hernandez, Culinary Arts. Ryan Hirsch, Culinary Arts. Lara Horan, Health Supportive Culinary Arts. Ying Ting Hu, Pastry and Baking Arts. Tate Jackson, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Sophie Jardine, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Nasara Jato, Culinary Arts. Danielle Jetta, Pastry and Baking Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management. Jessica Johannes, Pastry and Baking Arts. Yuni Kim, Pastry and Baking Arts. Evan Laffer, Culinary Arts. Rachel Latin, Pastry and Baking Arts. Vincent Leone, Culinary Arts. Suzanne Lizawa, Pastry and Baking Arts. Christopher Liu, Culinary Arts. Yu Ying Liu, Culinary Arts. Alexander Lopresti, Culinary Arts. Alicia Lovesin Young, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Elizabeth Lubin, Culinary Arts. Sulwen Ma, Pastry and Baking Arts. Ana Luisa Maciel de Farias, Pastry and Baking Arts. Madeline Malloy, Culinary Arts. Kimberly Mancheno, Culinary Arts. Vincent Manarino, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Liam Manton, Culinary Arts. 
Patrick Marcantuono, Culinary Arts. Tavares Martin, Culinary Arts. Carolina Martins, Culinary Arts and recipient of the Top Toke Award. Jennifer Matos, Pastry and Baking Arts. Catherine McRae, Health Support of Culinary Arts and recipient of the Top Toke Award. Sierra Melendez, Pastry and Baking Arts. Mark Anthony Melvin, Culinary Arts. Christina Mendoza Pena, Health Support of Culinary Arts. Amba Marcado, Pastry and Baking Arts. Michael Miano, Culinary Arts. Samantha Monroe, Culinary Arts. Isaiah Montemayor, Culinary Arts and recipient of the Most Likely to Succeed Award. Andrew Moore, Culinary Arts and recipient of the Most Likely to Succeed Award. Laura Mullins, Pastry and Baking Arts. Christian Munoz, Culinary Arts. Aaron Murray, Pastry and Baking Arts. Declan Maria, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Angela Natrin, Health Support of Culinary Arts. Melanie Nelson, Health Support of Culinary Arts and recipient of the Most Likely to Succeed Award. Katrina Elise Ng, Hospitality and Hotel Management. Erickson O'Reilly Nunez, Culinary Arts. Michaela Owens, Pastry and Baking Arts. Maria Payamps, Culinary Arts. Cassandra Pepin, Culinary Arts. Deshaun Payton, Pastry and Baking Arts. Jordan Pearson, Culinary Arts. Nalani Elise Pintal, Restaurant and Culinary Management and recipient of the Leadership Award. Andreas Plaitis, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Emily Pratt, Culinary Arts. Jason Ramirez, Culinary Arts. Georgina Ratnatunga, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Jason Reyes, Culinary Arts. Mary Ann Roberts, Culinary Arts. Carlos Lorenzo Santos Rufo, Culinary Arts. Franco Salcedo, Culinary Arts. Isaac Sanchez, Culinary Arts. Diani Santana Bautista, Pastry and Baking Arts. Kelly Self, Culinary Arts.
Arnest Salim, Culinary Arts. Orian Shapir, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Rebecca Shushta, Pastry and Baking Arts. Isabel Soto, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Samantha Spiesman, Culinary Arts and recipient of the Top Toke Award. Adam Stewart, Pastry and Baking Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management. Nicole Stredgelau, Pastry and Baking Arts and recipient of the Most Likely to Succeed Award. James Sullivan, Culinary Arts. Penny Tacos, Culinary Arts. Anna Lucia Tejeda Ariola, Culinary Arts and Restaurant Culinary Management and recipient of the Top Toke Award. Warren Thompson, Culinary Arts. Katie Tiger, Pastry and Baking Arts. Chia Jung Tsai, Pastry and Baking Arts. Kathleen Tume, Culinary Arts. Melissa Vargas, Pastry and Baking Arts. Yaneli Vasquez, Pastry and Baking Arts. Emily Valorio Torres, Pastry and Baking Arts. Jennifer Freeland, Culinary Arts. Michael Warner, Culinary Arts. Dominique Washington, Pastry and Baking Arts. Caitlin Williams, Culinary Arts and Restaurant and Culinary Management and recipient of the Most Likely to Succeed Award. Dane Weimer, Culinary Arts. Jeyu Zhu, Restaurant and Culinary Management. Christian Zabela, Hospitality and Hotel Management and recipient of the Leadership Award. Karina Zurita, Pastry and Baking Arts. On behalf of the faculty and staff at the Institute of Culinary Education, we would like to congratulate you on a job well done, and we wish you much success as you continue to find your culinary voice. Thank you all for joining us today. Hello graduates, this is Chef Celine Weichman from the Health Support of Culinary Arts program. I wanted to congratulate everyone for all of their hard work over these last years. It's a wonderful time to be a new cook entering the business. You will be change agents and I'm sure of it. I can't wait to see you in the business over the years and please keep in touch. Congratulations everyone. Hi, it's Jeff Uri and congratulations on graduating. Congratulations to all of you for completing step one of realizing your culinary dreams. We're all so proud of you. I'm excited for you to see what you do in the industry. And uh, remember, although you've just finished culinary school, you're now part of a wider ICE community. Stay focused, keep pushing hard, and stay in touch. Congratulations, graduates, and good luck. So happy to have gotten to know so many of you. Good fortune to you all. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations, graduates. Congratulations, graduates. I wish you the best. Uh, enjoy your internships and all the adventures that lie beyond. Best to you. Bye. 
Congratulations, graduates. I wish you the best in your future and everything that goes on out there. Good luck. Congratulations, graduates. We're so excited to see what you're going to do in the food, beverage, and hospitality industry. You all have made it, and we look forward to chasing your food adventures with you. To all the graduates, uh, especially the pastry and baking graduates, uh, you've done such a great job. You've accomplished this in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of all of this upheaval, and you've come through really strong and great. And I want you to know that your future looks really, really bright, and we're so happy and proud of you, and we love you all. And I just want you uh, to have the best success as you move forward, and always remember that you can reach us back at ICE anytime, and we're there for you, and we miss you, and best of luck. Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be celebrating with you today. I actually really love graduations. Uh, we all have goals, we have aspirations, but I think it's just as important to take the time that we're taking today to be proud of all you've accomplished by showing up to class, the early mornings, the weekends, uh, you showed up and you put in the work. And it's been an honor to work with so many of you. My wish for you is stay inspired, make beautiful food, keep learning. By learning, you keep discovering yourself and create food that brings you joy. And a big congratulations. Uh, you've definitely chosen the best field and community to be a part of. Hi everyone, congratulations on a job well done. Truly a wonderful accomplishment. You have a great set of tools to work with. Just go out, put them, put them to good use, whatever it is that you want to do. All the best. Good morning, I just want to take a minute to congratulate all the graduates for your fantastic work and accomplishment. And I wish you the, the best for the future and I can't wait to try what you're going to do in the restaurant. So congratulations everyone, thank you. Hi everybody, I wish that we could all get in, together in person to say goodbye and congratulations, but congratulations to everybody and I hope you keep in touch as you enter the industry and start your exciting new careers and uh, send pictures or let's all follow each other on Instagram or whatever's the next big platform, you know, <laughs> and um, you know, hope you all do really well and uh, learn a lot and um, hope it's uh, everything you wanted. Hi everyone, congratulations. Um, hopefully you're taking all the lessons I taught you in Mod 1 through in your amazing careers. I'm wishing you the best of luck and again, congratulations.